Welcome to module three of our Facebook Marketing for Business series. Module three, we're gonna cover all things advertising on the world's largest platform. What we'll cover in this training is Facebook advertising platform and solutions, how to create your own advertising campaigns and creating your own custom audiences. Starting off with a quote, one of my absolute favorites and something I base my entire training business around. You can give a poor man a fish and you feed him for a day. You teach a man to fish and you give him an occupation that will feed him for a lifetime. And certainly empowering you to be able to manage your own advertising campaigns within Facebook is a my way of teaching you how to fish and sustain yourself for a lifetime. Um, anyway, that's what I like to how I like to think of it anyway. So let's get straight into what the lessons are for this module. Lesson one, we're going to look at Facebook advertising, then we're going to look at navigating ads manager. Uh, certainly that is the platform that we'd like to explore for you to create and um, create and update your campaigns and we'll look at custom audiences because something that is very different with Facebook and despite all of the controversy that's been around the global data uh, protection um, uh, uh, what we want to be able to do here is uh, with, there is still access to a lot of information around targeting that ideal avatar and persona that we want to attract uh, within, uh, within Facebook. So lesson number one is Facebook advertising. We'll look at introducing Facebook advertising, the benefits and where you can advertise on Facebook. Where are you spending your advertising dollars right now? So if you were to think about what type of budget you have already you know, um, at the time of this recording, uh, it's just the 17-18 financial year has just come to an end. So if I was to ask you, where was your majority of your spend or how much did you spend on advertising? Is that something that you know automatically or is it something that you will have to go and do some research over? The problem is that we are walking down the street banging into light poles because there are people with faces buried in Facebook. Therein lies the opportunity within the pro within the problem. So you look around the next time you're in a public space uh, and people are really uh, immersed in their phones 24 seven and majority of the time they're checking their Facebook. Now as marketers call it good, bad or ugly, it's fantastic for us because that's where our people are hanging out. So that's an indication for us that that, that is where we need to also have a presence. Is this good or bad? Now, I have to be all yeah, There's always in particularly when I'm in group environments where I'm delivering training, there is always an objection to Facebook and just social media in general, really. That oh, I know it's important, but I don't like it. It's not something that I do. I don't engage in it. Now, we have to get this out early on in the piece that if you're going to be successful at marketing your business and marketing your destination or marketing your product or your service, you must live in the is world, not the should be world. Does that make sense? We've got to live, we've got to live in a world of this is what's happening now, not what we think should be happening because it's not something that resonates or something that we, we are into personally. Because we have to separate our personal uses of Facebook and social media to this is an effective business tool for to market and grow our brand and our customers and so forth. So the better question to ask ourselves is how can I get in front of my people inside their head and motivate them to do what I want them to do, okay? So that's the better question now, rather, rather than is this good or bad and this is how it should be, how can I get in front of my ideal customer 
and get into their head that I am their ideal supplier. So working versus working versus playing. Pa paying around on or playing around on social media is not running social media or controlling social media. And this is a very important point. This stuff is addictive. And this stuff and Facebook and Instagram, it is, it can kill productivity. So we have to really highlight these things and be sure to know when we're just playing and wasting time and when we're productively executing good marketing practices for our business. And have a look at this. What does this remind you of, this, this picture? It's definitely, it's the matrix. So we're either pulling the strings from the outside the matrix or we're the ones inside the matrix being entertained by it. Okay, so we have to really, um, and I, I'm getting, myself personally, I've been on this journey. I can find myself now quicker when I know, oh, the matrix has trapped me and I've been sucked in. I've got to get myself out and back into what I'm doing, okay? Because it can be very addictive and something, I mean, at the outset, something that I learned very on when I found it was wasting a lot of my time, I'm going in to do business. But then I see the babies and the holidays and the cousin that I haven't seen for years and suddenly you can lose time very, very quickly. So a tip I want to share with you is to download the Facebook Pages app. So when I go into Facebook now on my mobile phone, I only go and engage within my page and I stay well away from the blue personal app. You know, it's not to say that I don't ever go there, but I go when I do go on Facebook, I try to do it intentionally where I can go and I can engage and give some love and some comments and some feedback. Uh, but not on my time and not on my business time. When I'm in there to do business, that's all I want to be able to do. So we got that off our chest. We got that out uh, early. The characteristics of a Facebook advertiser. For you to be an effective advertiser, it's about injecting creativity into the system, measure and tracking your results, using tracking tools, paying attention to what works and what doesn't work, and the ability to influence the masses. Facebook is an aquarium that we live in. It knows what we look like, think, enjoy, and visit. So it is very, very intuitive, and there is a lot of technology. I mean, we talk about personalization and that's the way forward for the future. Facebook has nailed it. They know so much about what we like from what we do within the platform that we are definitely, it is like an aquarium. As marketers though, and as people that want to get in front of where the people are hanging out, once upon a time, I know when I started my marketing career, our biggest spend, $50,000 a year, was on a fa oh, not Facebook, on Yellow Pages half-page ad because that's what the, where the people went to to seek information. It was delivered to every door. And now it's different. The people where they're getting information has changed. And uh, this is something that is important for us to know. Talking about important things to know, Facebook has become the world's largest photo sharing site. It has become the largest thought sharing site, the largest linking site, the largest liking site and demographic and psychographic engine of our time. We haven't seen anything like it um, in this lifetime anyway. <clears throat> Caution, however. <coughs> We have to be warned and go in with caution, however, that Facebook was not built for us, for our people of business development managers and business marketers and business owners. It was not built for advertising. They built it for regular users to connect. The, peep, the advertising opportunities came afterwards when it was time to monetize all of these masses of people that have that were you know that came onto <clears throat> and uh, use the platform daily. A few fundamental terms and definitions to uh, share with you. 
So this is the app that I was talking about. I would much prefer you to download the Facebook Pages Manager app and do all of your Facebook activity through here. Now, some things to note. A post also knows as a Facebook status update, allows users to discuss their thoughts, whereabouts, um, or important information with friends and followers. Now, this is a personal profile. It is no different to what a professional, a business page profile will look like. The only difference you can see here with the business profile is that you can have, there's a metric and there's a number as to how many people it reached. And there's also this little blue button that makes Facebook billions of dollars where it gives you the opportunity to boost the post to your audience, to pay, uh, to pay to have the post um, shared uh, among more people. This is what an ad looks like. So an ad in Facebook is content displayed to Facebook users at an advertiser's specific request. The good thing though is that there is transparency and we know when what would look like a regular post is actually sponsored by that particular page and that particular brand. CTR is another um, term you will find within your reporting and this means your your click-through rate. So this measures all clicks that happen on the ad, including posts, reactions, comments, shares, and clicks on the profile picture. So if someone actually clicks on the picture to open it up, that is also measured as a click-through rate. Uh, so it measures all clicks on external links within the ad. Landing pages. The page uses land on once they click on your ad. As advertiser, you specify the URL of the landing page when creating the ad. So when you want to take your visitors or your audience to an external website, you must, signif you must specifically state the landing page or where you want them to go. So for example, when I do a, when I want to uh, do a campaign around building my email database, my landing page is my opt-in page where it has a form where people can put their, their name and email address uh, to come onto my database. So this isn't about uh, the difference between this and a home, the difference is between a home page is just going to the home page of your website, whereas a landing page is a specific URL that takes you somewhere within your website um, and they don't have to hunt for it. So this is an example of my landing page to get uh, more email subscribers. I have created an ebook and in order to, and I give that for free, but the exchange is for an email address. A bidding and budget. So Facebook wants cold hard cash and you must provide a credit card before Facebook will even think of displaying any advertisement for you. So you have to actually set up your billing account before you set up your ad campaigns. CPM, so this is cost per M, um, cost per M. The M represents impressions. M is the Roman numeral for 1,000. So it's the cost per 1,000 impressions. So with the CPM ad, you bid for what you are willing to pay per 1,000 impressions of your ad. And then if you look at an optimized CPM, that's a bid type that shows your ad to people that are more likely to take the action that you want them to, uh, that you want them to take. Reach and frequency, these are ads that display multiple times to the same user. So the number of individual people who have seen your ad during a specific time is reported by Facebook as a reach. So we want the average number of times each user has seen your ad is reported as frequency. So we have to keep a look at those numbers because certainly if we have a high frequency rate, it means that the same people are seeing the same ads and that could get a bit tiring and they might even block you after a while. So we have to keep, those are the type of reporting figures that we have to keep our finger on the pulse on. Some more benefits of advertising, it's incredible reach, it's really simple to set up. Uh, the ability to micromanage campaigns is excellent 
and you can track your results down to ad creative and your audience. And that's what's brilliant too with Facebook advertising in my experience is that it's very immediate. So when, when, you, put a, when you create an ad and you pl publish it, the, the reaction from your audience that you've targeted is very immediate whether it's resonated with them or if it hasn't. And as marketers, it's brilliant because you're not locked into it for a certain period of time. So even if you state that you want to run an ad for a week, if you find after two days it's a dud, it's a dud and you're paying real exorbitant amount of money per click and it's not really going anywhere, you can kill it and you can disengage with it and stop it and deactivate it. So that's a really great thing about the, res, the reporting functionality that we also have access to that. And that is empowering as marketers, you know, as they say, if it isn't measured, it's not managed. And we have the ability to not only create it, we have the ability to really manage it effectively. Where on Facebook can I advertise my product, you might ask? Well, here are the different elements of where you can advertise your product. Here you can see on the desk, on the news feed, on the timeline of, uh, of your audience, on the right hand side of the home page of Facebook and the most, uh, the most popular and the most uh, revenue generating for Facebook on the mobile news feed. There we go, note Facebook newsfeed formats are clicked on 50 times more than right hand side. So this one is nowhere near as popular as being in the actual um, newsfeed. Boosting posts, this is the Facebook easy button. And when we're talking boosting posts, we're talking about all the blue buttons that Facebook gives us the opportunity to spend more money and boost, uh, boost our posts to, to extend their reach. There are benefits to boosting posts, however. This gives your individual posts reach. It gives you social proof. So building likes, shares, and fans um, through boosting really does give you social proof and a level of credibility. It's great for testing fast, and for a small budget. So boosting a post is really great for that, that you can do it very quickly, you can do it from your phone, and uh, you can do it you know, for as little as five to $10. You can boost a post and get some, you know, some significant results. Here is an example. So everywhere you see blue, I've put a red border around it. Just, I mean, just in that one screenshot alone, we have six opportunities to boost and promote our page. And this one, it gives promote your local business, promote your website, boost these events that you have going on and promote your page. So um, uh, it makes it, it, they've made it super easier and easier for us to do that. Let's see an example, shall we? So here's a Facebook ad that I did earlier, no, just a Facebook post that I did earlier this year. Now, if I click on boost post, it will take me to this, it will extend the options for me here on the left hand side. Now, it's broken up into three areas. We set an objective, we set a call to action for our post button, and uh, we, or we can leave it as no button or we can select, you know, um, book here or call now or learn more. And then we have some basic audience building capability over here. And this is where you can choose, uh, you can choose uh, the, your age demographic. Uh, you can choose whether you want to run your ad to people who already like your page, people who like your page and their friends, or you can choose audiences that you've built in the past and saved them. So that lookalike audience is an audience that I've done within Ads Manager and I'll share a little bit more around that for you. Now if you follow, the, if you follow along onto the right hand side here, I've put, you can see there's desktop newsfeed, mobile newsfeed and then Instagram because yes, if you want to run ads on Instagram, that is also done through the Ads Manager of Facebook. There is some more. A capability now on Instagram that you can do some more uh, through the app 
uh, but you can um, you can also do it through your ads manager and I'll take you all through those steps when uh, in our next quarter series which will be all about uh, which will be three part series on Instagram so this is an example of it show, showing us a preview of what this post and what this ad will look like on the desktop news feed. It gives us a preview of what it would look like on the mobile news feed. And then it gives us a preview of what it will look like on an Instagram post. So the Facebook ads basic formats is text, image, a link embedded with an image, a link embedded with an image and a call to action to learn more, book now, shop now. Uh, you can run videos, you can run videos with a call to action, an event, an offer or a local promotion. Call to action buttons, here are the options that you have, learn more, shop now, sign up, book now or download, particularly if it's an app um, that you want to be... Um, that you want to be uh, uh, extending or boosting or promoting, uh, download might be the, the way to go. Or say, for example, my ebook, I might be able, I might want to choose download as the call to action as well. Now I want us to really think about and have a good, clear understanding what the difference is between boosting and promoting posts. Because a lot of businesses think that they're doing Facebook advertising, but all they're doing really is boosting posts that they've already they've already done. So a common misconception is that a Facebook ad is the same thing as boosting a, a post when it's not. The boost function on a post on a page is essentially the simple and quick way to pay for reach to your fans. Advertising is a process of setting an objective a format, a targeted audience to achieve your desired results. So where possible, you should focus on advertising over, over boosting. You'll get a lot more bang for your buck when it's done as a strategic advertising campaign where you can really, um, really take into consideration all those elements of setting an objective, a format, and more specifically and more importantly, choosing a targeted audience so let's look at lesson two now and navigating ads manager the goals for this lesson are going to be facebook advertising platforms how to create facebook custom audiences and the ingredients of a winning facebook ad so three main advertising platforms are ads manager power editor and business manager to go through the differences between all of these three advertising platforms, Ads Manager is best for small business. It's for, for me and you to be able to effectively carry out our own advertising campaigns and when we're really only managing our own Facebook accounts. It's a guided setup of ads, so it's very, very step-by-step -step and guide you through the process. Uh, has account overview in graphical format an extensive reports area. Now, Power Editor, you're really looking at when you're doing bulk editing and bulk uploading of ads. So this is a more advanced, has some more advanced features and campaign tags for grouping. So these are the type of things like for, for digital agencies and, um, and consultants that manage a large number of accounts, Power Editor would be their jam and their, uh, their way of uh, running ad campaigns. But for us, you know, I'd like to tell you these things and share with you what's out there, but I also like to recommend to you to stick with Ads Manager. It has all of the bells and whistles that all the others has, and it's a lot simpler to use. And then there's Business Manager, which is uh, best used if you've got multiple pages and if you have more than three people, um, or an agency, um, an agency is involved. Uh, so if you've got a lot of clients, uh, if you're someone that's coming into this uh, training and looking at starting your own consultancy, or um, yeah, that might be a business manager or, or um, a power editor might be something to consider. However, in saying that, you can still manage multiple. I've managed up to six or seven accounts simultaneously and advertising campaigns 
on ads, ads manager, no problem. Uh, so food for thought. Navigating ads manager. So let's take a deep dive and look at more into this platform. To get into ads manager, here's the URL, facebook.com forward slash ads and then forward slash manager. Here is a look at what Facebook manager uh, ads manager looks like. And if you wanted to go back into your Facebook profile, back into your Facebook account, it's a matter of just hitting the top left hand corner there, the Facebook logo, and you will go back to your profile. But let's decode what we're looking at here. At the very, um, to break it down into the middle there, this is how Facebook really uh, sections out an ad campaign. Um, we've got campaigns, we've got ad sets, and then we've got the actual ad creative. Now, when it comes through to your results, when you're looking at your campaigns, uh, to start with, you can see your delivery, the current status of your campaign. Uh, you can look at your results, reach. We went through what uh, that explains. But the great thing is that when you hover over it, you can see there's a lot more detail for you to cover. If you you know if you've gotten a little bit, if you've forgotten or get a little bit confused, what is that again? There's um, the information is presented to you automatically as soon as you hover your mouse over. Budget. Very important, the maximum amount you're willing to spend on your ads, uh, the total amount spent, and then when the campaign um, is scheduled to stop or when it's ended. So for this instance, I ran a Facebook, um, in this instance, I ran a Facebook marketing for tourism, an online course, and uh, this would have just gotten underway, and I, so far, I had two clicks. Uh, for that for that particular one now I would have killed that off very quickly because at a glance you can see okay this um, oh no well I did kill it because um, uh, it had for I paid eleven dollars nineteen per click and that is really I mean by my standards I don't like to pay anything over a dollar that is really expensive so something didn't really uh, resonate with this the, with the way this was presented and the way I may have done this it looked like I actually boosted the event um, so you live and learn you try and you measure different things but like I mentioned earlier the best thing is you can deactivate and stop these um, stop these uh, stop these ads as soon as you see something like that you can say no this isn't working and then I can go back it doesn't mean you need to go recreate the, the wheel again but it could also mean that you will go back and tweak your ad with your copy. You know, let me try a different headline or a different title, or maybe even a different call to action. Uh, now, we'll come through to your campaign. So the major thing you want your ad to do is, your, uh, is when you're looking at your campaign. So what do you want your ad to achieve? And there's a total of 11 objectives, but you can only choose one for your campaign. So when you're looking at your, when you're starting out in your campaign, these are the 11 objectives that are presented to us. Now the most popular I would encourage is traffic, engagement, if you want to grow your community and your page likes, video views and conversions. Now if like me, I was like, well traffic and conversions, what's the difference? When it comes to traffic, that's like if you've written a really cool blog post and maybe there's a, a call to action embedded within the blog post. So it's not necessarily, that is content that you want to drive more traffic to that blog post, but you don't necessarily want the conver the conversion is secondary because it's, it's embedded within the content. However, a conversion is telling Facebook, we want, we want, your, we want the users, we want this ad, anyone that clicks on it, we want them to do something. We want immediate results. And Facebook can really, through their algorithms, can present these, will present these types of ads differently depending on that objective that we've set. So if we've said we just want traffic to our website for this particular ad that we've created, Facebook will do everything that they can 
to drive as much traffic as they can to their website. Uh, inadvertently, that the same thing will happen if we set conversions, only this time Facebook will really put the ad in front of people that are more active in taking, uh, taking action. Ad sets, so inside each campaign are ad sets. Ad sets difference is that it has different audience and budget. All ad sets still have the same objective. Everything that you, whatever objective you set from the very beginning of your campaign remains throughout, okay? Whereas your ad sets, that's where, that's really where the meat of your ad is going to live. Then there's your ad. This is the fun part. This is the actual ad itself. It's the creative when it comes to the media and the format. So this is where you choose. Do I want a single image? Do I want multiple image? Do I want a carousel ad? Do I want a video ad? Um, and there it is all laid out. You see objective up the top. And as you go through the stages, uh, it literally ticks them off and highlights them as you go down. So it is very, very simple. It just sometimes it's a matter of having someone explain it to you. Uh, regardless of difficulty, there are seven key components to any Facebook ad. They start with location, audience, budget, the links you want to drive, uh, you want to use within your ad, graphics, copy, and results, okay, and the reporting. When it comes to location, we're looking at where to advertise on Facebook, okay? Location is, do I want it to... Um, do I want it to be on the on the desktop newsfeed, mobile newsfeed, on Instagram, on Messenger now, on Stories? There's a lot of different places and locations within the Facebook network that we can choose to advertise. Your audience, who will you put the ad in front of? Who do you want? You know, who do you want to put the ad in front of when they're scrolling through their newsfeed? Then there's budget, how much you want to spend. Links, where do you want the ad to take your audience if you choose a link, like a traffic or conversion. Graphics, you can load multiple graphics in your ads. What will they be? Uh, copy, what text will I use to complement my ad? It's very important to have a pre-think about that. And then your results. Am I happy with my results when measured against my key objective? So when you set out your goal, and your objective at the very start, that's a good point. That's a good point to actually also put some metrics around what you want to achieve out of it. So, and then of course, you can ask yourself at the end of it, how could I have done better here? Just like my two, you know, $11 click. Uh, I can look at that and go, okay, I must have, you know, I boosted an event. Uh, you know, I'd have to go back and dissect what audience did I choose? How long did I... Uh, how long did I leave it run for? Was it a good image? What did it say in the text? So things like that, you can go back and reanalyze and say, okay, what could I have done better here? Or maybe, you know, that's not something I will do again uh, in the near future. I have a Facebook ads checklist here for you. So you can really go through the motions of before starting, before you actually, because a lot of the time people go straight into manager ads manager to build out their ad campaign, but you're kind of behind the eight ball already. When you're going straight into ads manager to build out your Facebook ad without giving any type, having any type of a plan or a thought behind uh, beforehand, then again, we're leaving a op big opportunity on the table and really, and leaving money on the table too. So going through a checklist like this, that before you even open up ads manager, you give some thought as to what your key objective is and what are your goals around your objective. Uh, so you can um, uh, you can start, you know, is, you know, am I going to choose traffic? Am I going to choose conversion? Am I going to choose video? Am I going to build likes? Am I going to run an ad to an event? And so forth. Um, then you kind of start with advertising location. Is it going to be on the page where I'm going to boost the ad? Or is it going to be through Ads Manager or Power Editor? And then we look at your audience. Is it going to be a cold audience, a warm audience, or a hot audience? Now, when if it's a cold audience, 
then you'd want to, and I'll show you this uh, a little later on, if it's a cold audience, you definitely want to make sure that you select that you don't want anybody that's following your page already because there's no point in doing that. So you don't want to actually run it. If you want to acquire or build, um, if you want to build um, followers or if you want to acquire some new, build your email database, um, your email database, you might want that to be a hot audience within Facebook because they already know you and like you and love you and trust you. So to build a hot audience, then you would want to choose maybe the people that already follow you because they already know you. And we, as our objective, we want to get them off, you know, we want to have them as Facebook likers, but we also want to translate and have them as email subscribers as well, as opposed to a cold audience where you can tick a box to say, I do want, do not want this ad to be shown to anybody that follows my page already. I want just new cold eyeballs to come onto my business branded page. Number three, most important is setting a maximum daily budget. And daily is always a good way to go with it. So then uh, for myself personally, I look at $10 a day spends. So I know at the end of the day, my maximum budget is going to be anywhere between $300 and $310 a month, uh, depending on the campaign that I'm running. And sometimes, I mean, I don't run consecutive ads for any longer really than one to, uh, than seven to 10 days. So I like to do things in short spurts. Uh, however, again, the caveat to that, if I see an ad is performing really, really well and I'm getting results for a very low cost per click or, and, or click through rate, then I will just, I would let it run. Uh, the links, so thinking about your objective and your audience and your budget, you also want to think about, okay, where will, you know, what URL will I like to use as my landing page or my conversion page um, link, like your booking page or your, you know, where customers can buy from you. Um, so here's an example of some links to give you of my landing page and my conversion page link. Um, of when I know that Facebook can measure that an action was taken. So when that conversion page link comes up, I know that they've actually subscribed and I can measure it back to my results. Then there's graphics. You have up to six. You can pilot and kind of do a test, a, a split test around six images per ad. And this is a really fascinating one because what happens essentially is you write your headline and your copy is the same, but what can change up is the image that is aligned with it. So you have up to six tries to do that, and I would normally leave it no less than 24 hours before you can go back and see which image is performing better than the others, and keeping the, the stronger ones, and then deactivating the poor performers. Uh, your copy, so thinking about your headline, your main copy, and your newsfeed copy. They, now, they all have character limitations. And so, again, you can see the benefit. Taking the time to do this before you actually start your ad then will make this process so much more enjoyable, a fun, and faster way to execute them. Uh, so, we don't want to touch our ad for up to 24 hours. At 24 hours, we want to pick our winning graphic. So what's won, what's hot, and what's not. And after 48 to 72 hours, we can really get a good gauge of how our ad's performing. And we have the ability to either increase our spend, decrease our spend, or completely leave the campaign and shut it down and deactivate it altogether. So the strategic way forward with Facebook ads. Here is an example if you want to build a like ad. So this is where you want to build an ad campaign to grow your Facebook page community. The people, you want to grow the number of people that actually like your page. Now we've looked at this and we know how we can dissect the different areas where we can have you know, the kind of the ad builder on the left here. And then in the middle here, we have our key 11 objectives that are 
targeted around awareness, consideration, and conversion. And those three, my friends, awareness, consideration, and conversion, you're really looking at the customer journey there, okay? Any type of customer journey, they start at an awareness stage, then they go to the next stage where they're considering you, and then the third stage is that they've converted. Uh, now, the most, uh, I'm, as I highlighted earlier, the four most popular objectives are traffic, engagement, video views, and conversions. So if I want to build a like campaign, what you would need to do is go on to choose engagement, and then in the middle there, you'll see page likes. You need to choose your page. And then this is where, this is the most interesting and fascinating and really the guts of your ad is your audience. And here you can see you've got some different options. You can create a new audience or here you can use a saved audience. So if you go to the trouble of building out a brand new audience, you have the opportunity to save it at the end and then refer back to it when you come back to run some more ads. So you definitely don't need to keep recreating the wheel. Uh, the next uh, level of, uh, so here's an example of a saved audience that I built out called the social media audience, where I've chosen a location. So I've chosen an audience that targeted around Melbourne, uh, Victoria, and also parts of Greece of English-speaking people that live in Greece that have an interest in social media. And you can see there, I have excluded people who like Despina because I'm running a like campaign. I don't want anyone that actually that likes me currently to be shown these ads because they're already in my consideration phase. And then interest is where I'm really getting more specific in targeting different pages, so other popular social media pages, and also just you know generic uh, industry brand terms like small business, entrepreneurship, uh, business, um, uh, small business, business, digital marketer, education, um, or management. So more generic interests of the type of people that I want to put my ad in front of. Now in the so in the middle section here is where we build our ad and then to the right you can see every time you change a different element of your audience this barometer here and these metrics will also change with it. Uh, so this is something that's really as you build out your audiences um, as you kind of choose your location and your age and is it men um, or women or all languages and so forth, as you go through all of this, the, the estimated daily, ro ro uh, daily reach and the page likes will also change. And this is a good gauge too, at a visual, when you can see here, this literally this barometer, that you can see getting your audience in the green means that you're, you know, you're not too specific, but you're not too broad, that you've kind of, you've given uh, Facebook a really good pool of data to work with, that it's quite, um, that it's uh, significant and strong enough to be a targeted audience. Uh, so placements, I always leave it to automatic placements. It's recommended. They know what they're doing. I just leave it to Facebook to place my ads. I have tried to edit placements and do it manually in the past, and it was a real flop. So I just set my budget and let Facebook produce the, produce the results. And down the bottom here is where you can select your daily budget. But the most important thing is, to run your ad set and set a schedule for it to finish because it can be very easy to forget about an ad campaign and all it will do is keep running and Facebook will just keep charging your card. So when you're kind of, when you're building out your campaigns, always put, uh, always put an end date, uh, end date to it. Um, so we've gone through budget and schedule. So this is all pretty straightforward. You don't need to change much or anything uh, in this section here. And as you go through, then you go into the ad. And see here, 
everything is ticked. We've done the page, we've done audience, we've done our placements and our budget, and now we're down to the third little section where we can choose our format. So in this instance, I've chosen a single image, and here I've made a note that in my text, hello, I help small, small business get clear on their purpose. But really, that is something that is um, that I refined in my text, and I put it on here just as a side note of writing effective copy for your ads. Every time you use the word you or your, then you're making it about them. Then you're showing how this is going to benefit them. So in this text, so and you see at the top here in the status, it says, "Want to grow your small business." Follow for tourism, social media, and digital marketing insights and inspiration. Okay, now that this I've had quite a bit of success with that copy, so I've saved that in my notes uh, that I can have it at the ready for a new ad in the future when it comes to doing another like campaign. And as you can see here, like we I showed you with the boost post. You can also see, uh, you can dongle down and see all the different uh, different images, six images you've, show, you've chosen, and also how it will be displayed on the different um, on the different platforms. And here's a preview of what it looks like on a mobile newsfeed. Here's a preview of what it looks like on a desktop um, on a desktop newsfeed, and so forth. When it comes to your ad preview, and then away you go and you create an ad. Now, separate to a like campaign, I also want to take this opportunity to sh take you through how you would build out a click ad, so a click through campaign. So to start with, it's a matter of dongling down and choosing create ad. And in this instance, for a link campaign, um, and, for in, and for this example, I've done it to my opt-in page, I'm choosing to go traffic. Now, when you choose this, it's, it looks a little bit different. Now, this section here is different to what we saw earlier because now it's saying that you need to choose where you want to drive the traffic. Is it going to be to a website? Is it going to be to an app? Or will it be to Messenger? And in my case, I wanted to do it to a website. Uh, now, again, in the same way, you choose your daily budget. I wouldn't worry too much about this, about optimization for ad delivery, but you go through the same flow as what I showed you earlier. Now, the big difference that presents itself when, you are, when you're doing anything but a like campaign is that Instagram presents itself because they, this is one of the biggest differences between running a Facebook ad and an Instagram ad that with Facebook, you can run targeted ads to build your Facebook page community. Whereas with Instagram, you cannot run an ad on Instagram that is going to build your followers. On Instagram is only primarily for advertising, um, call to actions that you can learn more, download, shop. You know, it's more, um, it's more actively geared to a call to action to go to an external source but not to follow and that's why this looks different and the instagram page is on there uh, so again you've got the different options of the different formats you can add in your different images um, here again this is something i've popped in the website url which is to that ebook that i showed you earlier and then in the copy again i've used i've I've made it into a question and I've put the word you into it again where I've said are you struggling with your digital marketing download your free copy of the 10 most common mistakes made by small business and how to overcome them so now I'm putting myself in their shoes and saying are you struggling here's something that might be able to help you and that's what that looks like and that's where the landing page will go so this in particular one, so when I looked at um, the results for this after 10 hours in, 10 hours into this campaign, I ended up receiving five subscribers at 85 cents each. So a much more successful campaign, advertising campaign, uh, than my other one uh, to the event that had $11. 
Uh, so that's what you're looking for, really. That, uh, that's a good result. Um, and then it gives me that uh, additionally for the, um, yeah, at the, at the time I had 10 landing page reviews. Uh, landing page views so people that actually went on to click through to the landing page and they had um, and it was at 44 cents per view but out of those 10 I had a 50% success rate because only five subscribers um, actually uh, only five people actually subscribed so buying a conversion ad this is different again that if you're choosing as an object objective to convert uh, something and we'll go back into doing the same thing where we want to use our uh, conversion metric to you know use the same example as to getting a um, getting more opt-ins but see the only difference here is that you need you to be able to uh, load up your URL or your landing page you need to align a Facebook pixel to it now this is something that you might need a little bit of assistance with from your web developer but I'll show you how you can get the code and then you email it and pass it on to your web developer and they can put it behind your website. Uh, and then away we go again. You can build out your audience and you can see the metrics and the different results that can vary on the side there. You can choose the interests of your market and then you can choose exclude people who like your page and then you can go and save the audience. Now, when, um, and you know, you can go and name the audience. So in this instance, I've saved it. I've called it uh, Institute of Excellence Cities. So I've chosen all the major cities around Australia and I've chosen females 25 plus as my key demographic. Uh, and then you can schedule, you can even schedule your, what date and time you want your ad to kick off okay so not only can you schedule when you want it to finish you can also get ahead of the game and choose when you want it to go live uh, and then as you go through all of those uh, all of that process you hit continue and away you go onto the fun stuff of building out your ad and you notice again Instagram presents itself because it's something it's leading to a call to action and this is, uh, this is where too, um, I should point out that with the images, you can either have your own image library. The only thing that you have to be really mindful of when it comes to Facebook advertising is that you don't want too much text on top of your image. You want, um, you want to keep, the, it, it only needs to cover 20% of your image, otherwise it won't get approved. Now, if you don't have the right images, uh, you can go and have access to free stock images so through Shutterstock, so, which is fantastic as well. And that's where, where I was mentioning earlier, you choose your six images, but all your copy remains the same. The only thing that's served up from Facebook and changes is the image in the middle. Uh, so there's a, a look at a preview at a desktop newsfeed. And there's a look at all the different call to action. So remember we said an ad that can have text, it can have a link, and it can have a call to action. And that's what this, uh, this uh, ad, particular ad is looking like. Uh, and there are all the different options for you to choose from on where you want your ad to be featured. And there's an example of a different image. And no, it's got Shutterstock, the image is watermarked as Shutterstock. It doesn't actually do that in the live ad, so don't um, don't panic if you see that. Oh, I don't, you know, why would I run an ad that's got watermarked um, of you know of uh, the stock photo? It doesn't actually watermark it. So then you can see all those different images, what they look like on the different platforms. So there's your Instagram ads um, and your Instagram image ads that allows um, for images in portrait and landscape when established as adverts. So remember that Instagram is a photo platform and images should be photos, not just sales messages. And then there's Instagram video ads that can run now for as long as 60 seconds. They used to be only 15 seconds. Uh, so these videos can all carry a call to action button like a Facebook ad. 
So there you have it. There's a real insight into the inner workings of Ads Manager within your Facebook. The best way to really grasp the platform, just like anything, is to go in and have a play. Okay, it doesn't, you can start with $1 if you want to, just to kind of test it out and test a few things. Um, but yeah, definitely roll up your sleeves. You've got this video as a resource to go through the different phases. Um, and, uh, and certainly what Facebook have gotten very good. They're not the best at customer service, but they have certainly gotten better at improving the process. So you really have the, the platform really does take you through a good user experience from one stage to the next. And there's a lot of information that you can click on to find out more or, you know, or define what things mean within the platform. Okay, so that's lesson two done and dusted. Let's move on to lesson three. So this is, I've created its own lesson for custom audiences, just to really hit home exactly how you go through and create um, different types of audiences for your Facebook ads. So what we'll look at here is custom audiences explain, custom audience options, and how to set up a custom audience. So creating custom audience is when you upload a list of emails, phone numbers, or Facebook user IDs that you want to target, and Facebook will match them with its users. So this is now where you're not just creating a new audience, you're creating something that's custom to you, and I'll show you all the different options that are available to you. So once you've created a custom audience, you can ask Facebook to create a broader lookalike audience to target your ads towards similar users. So you can actually say to Facebook, okay, take all of the people that currently like my page, they already know me, I've already got them in my, aware. you know, they're, they're already aware of my brand. What I wanna do, Facebook, is can you go out into your over two billion people and find out and give me a certain percentage of people that look exactly like the people that are currently in my tribe at the moment. Uh, and that is totally doable. So this is when it looks like the type of characteristic and patterns that they look for in uh, your user that they have in common, such as age, gender, interests, and creating a much bigger list of very similar users. Now the way to do this, now what we have showed you earlier within Ads Manager is how to create a new audience. But when it comes to creating a custom audience, you can either create, uh, when you're creating a new one, you can create a custom audience or a lookalike audience. Now another way that you can look at audiences, so this is done directly through Ads Manager in the same way that I showed you earlier. Or another way you can get to audiences and building out your custom audience is if you go down to this, um, if you go to those three lines next to Ad Manager in the top left hand corner here and dongle down and hit Ads Manager, this all actually comes out. So this, this, pop, this pops up and you want to go and click on Audiences. Now this is another way that you can create a custom audience or a lookalike audience for your advertising. And you can also, once you get on there, it also showcases all of your saved audiences. Now, when you're creating a new custom audience, these are your different options that are available to you. A customer file, which essentially means you can go and upload your email database onto the back end of your ads manager and then Facebook will create an audience around all of those people because then the theory behind that is that normally whatever email you have of your um, from your email database it will be the same email that is used as a you know for red for as um, the primary email for users in Facebook there's this way using a customer file to match your customers with people on Facebook and create an audience from those matches. The data is hashed prior to the upload. 
Uh, and this is, you know, you can import directly from MailChimp or you can just copy and paste all of your data straight into Facebook and it, cre it will create an audience around that. Um, and there's some more example about how you can download your file. So very easy and it spits out a, you know, a custom audience around uh, your email database. Then we have website traffic. So anyone that is come, uh, it will pick up to say, okay, anyone that has come to my website over the last period of time, and you can set those parameters, I want you to run ads to those people. And these are those traffic and conversion ads that we really need to lock in our Facebook pixel behind them. And then there's app activity, offline activity, and engagement. And particularly when it comes to engagement, that's when we're looking at video, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Now with the Facebook pixel, you need to create, uh, when it, you need one, uh, when you're creating a custom audience. The way to do that, remember I just showed you earlier these three lines um, up on top of Ad Manager. When you click on that, this pop down menu will come up and pixels is what you want to select. And you hit setup and it will give you a pixel code. And it's similar to your Google tracking code, you need to give that code to your web developer to be able to upload onto the back end of your site. Uh, offline activity, now this is a little bit more advanced that you can get certain um, APIs and code from your CMS, from your, um, your customer management system or your point of sale uh, system and then upload and have that link through to your Facebook. So anybody that's made a transaction with you through your point of sale can be directly aligned um, to then run ads to those people that have come through your store and then run lookalike ads to them. But certainly there's a little bit, there's a deeper level of tech involved in that and it might be something that you need help uh, from an expert to do. And last but not least, there's engagement. And engagement you can have um, you know, video and uh, lead form, a full screen experience, Facebook page, Instagram business profile, or an event. Now for a video to work, for a video ad, normally this is something where you have to have already uploaded the video and check this out. Then you can run an ad, you can specify, okay, I wanna run, I'll run, a, run this ad to either people that viewed at least three seconds of your video or you might be on the flip side and say, well, if someone's watched 95% of my video, that means they're really hot. So I'm going to go and run an ad to the people that watch 95% of the video, depending what it is, what the context of the video content is, you'll be able to gauge who you'll want to run reoccurring ads to that have watched that video. And here's an example of the videos that they must already be in your timeline for you then to be able to run a video ad. You then, once you click on that, then you just go through and click on a video that already exists uh, within, that, uh, within that mix. Okay, and then there's creating the lookalike audiences. This is pretty straightforward. You, you choose your custom, you know, you choose your audience or your page. You search for the countries or the regions that you want to target. And then you really just, you're, it's a matter of sliding um, to get the, you know, the effective audience size of what you're replicating of your current audience. Okay, so this ranges from 1% to 10% of the total population of the country, countries uh, that you have, uh, that you've show, chosen. So another thing to play around with. So in this instance, I've chosen, um, I've said, yep, I want to run it on my Despina page. I want to run the locations I've chosen is Greek and Australia. And then as I go through the, the, you know, the paces here, it will give me some more tips around, okay, the audience size ranges from 1% to 10% of the total population of the country you choose, with 1% being those who most closely match your audience. Now, in this, with this particular uh, audience, um, uh, audience uh, objectives, um, when I've gone to level three, you can see here it says resulting audiences, and uh, we want three percent 
of what is currently out there and the estimated reach is telling me is 648,000 people, which is not bad, um, not bad at all. So there you go. So that's what uh, creating a lookalike audience will look like. And uh, this is where, you know, I've had a little play of different areas um, uh, where, you know, and I create, you know, a different number of audiences uh, and have a play with those. And I encourage you to do the same. Something else that is very important to note is that in locations, you can choose people who live it, you know, you can say when you choose, you know, say, for example, I've chosen Melbourne, I can say either people who live in Melbourne, people who people recently in Melbourne or people traveling in Melbourne. So for those of you that are in the tourism industry, for example, and you want to target the international visitor once they're here in Melbourne and looking for things to do or looking for places to eat and drink you might want to run those ads those type of ads and then actually include here that I want these to only go to people traveling in this location and Facebook knows that as well that they're traveling there because they've left um, they've left their their um, their home you know their origin um, uh, to to travel so there you have it. There's some more information around custom audiences. That's a lot to take in, I know, to have a bit of a recap of what we've covered. Course summary, Facebook advertising. We looked at the benefits of using Facebook for advertising. We looked at Ads Manager and how to navigate your Facebook ad, Ads Manager. We looked at campaign setup and how, and we set up two different campaign examples of a, a like and a click-through campaign and we put a focus on custom audiences and how you can find and create them for your business whether it's look-alike audiences or retargeting people that have visited your website or actually uploading an email database and creating a custom audience around that okay if you just work on stuff that you like and you're passionate about you don't have to have a master plan with how things will play out. I like that one from Mark Zuckerberg. So if you just kind of keep on doing stuff that you like and you enjoy and clearly you have a passionate passion and more importantly have a curiosity around how you can better your business using these tools, you will just naturally become a master at it the more that you go in and you and you kind of go through just testing and measuring applying it should be apply test measure you know and keep what's working and redo and recreate what's not working so i'll leave you on that note again my dear friends please stay connected let me know how you're going please reach out if you have any questions but without further or do I want to express my deep gratitude for those of you that have watched this entire three-part Facebook series. I look forward to hearing your feedback. And certainly, I also, you know, that I have a Facebook page, Despina Caratius or Be Excellent HQ. Uh, would be wonderful if I could ask for your kind reviews if you enjoyed this training. I always say though as well, if you didn't enjoy the training, I'd still love to hear from you, but send me a PM or send me an email. Okay, here's to your Facebook excellence, to, here's to your business excellence, here's to your life excellence today and every single day. Uh, big love and big thank you for, uh, for, for coming along this Facebook journey with me. Okay, until next time, my friends, we're going to look at um, booking and doing exactly the same thing as what we've done now, but for Instagram, and we'll see you in the second quarter for that lot of training. Okay, goodbye for now.